Hi everyone. Welcome to Triple R Reefer. I wanted to uh, start documenting my reefing journey. Finally, after I don't know four years in the hobby or back in the hobby, I wanted to uh, I guess document and track, share stories uh, about my reef tank. Kind of just share with y'all along the way. So this is a Red Sea 425. It's actually a downgrade to the tank before it, which was a custom 240. And before that was a Red Sea 750. The reason for downgrading was to get time back. It, you spend a lot of time on these reef tanks, cleaning, maintaining there's just it's just more work with a bigger tank those of you that's upgraded pretty much uh will probably vouch for that everything is just more involved so uh that's why i downgraded but so this video is going to be talking about um, just this reef tank in general um, the equipment what's in it i'm not going to get into uh much more than that I got a lot to talk about so uh, this is going to be more just what is going on with this reef tank at this time um, it was set up February uh, early February um, this so these corals are basically an accumulation of roughly I don't know let's call it four years they should be a lot bigger um, I've had a some recent issues we'll we'll discuss um, uh, mainly acro eating flatworms I actually ended up beating them and I will do a video on how I did that um, it was a lot of work and uh, just give you a little hint it took a lot of dipping but there was a process I went through and some things that I dosed as well that I think had a lot of um, a lot of to do with the success I had with beating them. As you can probably see, there is no fish in here. So that is because I had gotten velvet. Um, actually, in quarantine, I re-quarantined all my fish because of ick and decided to just quarantine all my fish. Well, along the way, I bought a couple of ex extra fish here and there and did all the same quarantine protocol that I would do on all my other fish. And, uh, mainly tank transfer method or hybrid tank transfer method uh, humble fishes program and at some point uh, these aren't foolproof uh, protocols I screwed up and got uh, velvet and didn't realize it until it was too late you know as you transfer you're beating you're beating the parasite um, and you're outrunning it well as you stop if there's even one um, they're going to infect the fish and their population is going to grow and eventually uh, it'll, it will do its thing. And I lost damn near every fish. Um, the ones that made it, I will talk about uh, once the new fish go in. I'm going to be adding a lot of fish to this tank. A lot of people will probably be uh, saying it's overstocked. I don't care. <laughs> I love my fish. Um, I think as long as you stay up on the water quality, that's really all that matters. And that's something I feel like I can do. So I will do a video on that uh, when I add the fish. Um, that's going to be interesting. Like I said, it's going to be a lot of fish at one time. And hopefully that goes well. So let's talk about the corals. I apologize for the reflection here. Uh, this is a uh, SPS dominant mixed reef. Uh, let's see here. You can see I'm dealing with a lot of sea lettuce. With no fish to eat, it's kind of taken over. Miss my tangs. I put a lot of urchins in here to take over that recently. I usually keep uh, roughly three or four urchins. I think currently in this tank there's seven or eight. Um, 
I highly recommend urchins. As long as you don't have frags that can just be pulled up and walked around with, you're all set with urchins. They just, they mow over all of it. These are some of my corals. The glass is dirty. This is a, I guess the real deal reef tank, if you will. It's not just been cleaned and show ready. I normally do clean the glass pretty regularly, but I didn't feel like putting my hand in the tank. So some of the corals. It's a home wrecker right there in the middle. I'm trying to get the glare for you. Excuse the Hulk in the background. That's a Matt B Rainbow Envy. A COP. I believe that is a cherry bomb. I could be wrong, I can't remember. A lot of nice tenuous pieces in here. All these were a lot bigger at some point uh, along the way and they would either be fragged or they were cut in small pieces to save them from acro eating flatworms. So again we'll talk about that later but my torches. It's my big R gumdrop echinata. Gonies. I got a few Gonies doing pretty bad in here. And it was actually recently. These Gonies have been with me for years with no issues. And uh, now they are not doing well. So actually I plan on uh, rehoming them to a buddy of mine in his tank for just a little while so he can try to save them and I'll give him a frag just for doing that. That's the corals. Here's the tank. So uh, let's talk about flow. I've got four MP40s. I love MP40s because of the ease of maintenance. Don't love the price, but you know, you get what you get um, with that technology. Uh, so the other part is some JBOs. I don't think they get enough credit. I've got one there and one there on post mo pulse mode at the lowest setting. Um, I actually really like JBO pumps. Now, people say they don't last very long, and that's sometimes true. But for what you could replace that pump for, um, maybe five times before you get to the cost of an MP40. You know, it just. You really can't justify them. Um, I mean, the MP40s that look great, but a lot of flow. You don't have cables in there. See, so I got the reason why. I mean, obviously, I got them. I really like them, but cost wise, you don't need them. Um, they just don't make sense. But this hobby really doesn't make sense. Buying colorful, colorful animals. I'm trying to keep them in a glass box. But it is fun. It's challenging. So that's my flow. Uh, lighting. I'm running Ecotech Gen 5 Blues XR15s with uh, T5 Hybrid, a 48 inch. Those are all blue plus bulbs. I love the blue look love the color pop t5s uh, don't think they get enough uh, credit uh, to me I mean you can grow corals with LEDs I think that's been proven I know it's been proven but with t5s you just get this blanket of light in the perfect spectrum and corals just love it you can basically grow anything you want to I highly recommend t5s you know the whole bulb change and I think that's been debunked by uh, BRS, you know, I, I'll change my one. I feel like it, I guess, but you know, these corals, um, they just take off under T5s. When I swapped from the tank before this, I didn't have the 48 inch T5 fixture for oh, a little while. I had a bigger fixture and of course had to 
go to a smaller one when I went to a smaller tank. Well, this, the SPS just, it's like they just stopped growing. You know, they were alive, had all the PE in the world, but, you know, they just take off under T5s. It's just, it's crazy the difference. All the corals love it. So, my recommendation, that's all it is. Um, let's see, screen top. This is a clear view lid screen top. Um, I've had them on every single tank. I think screen tops are a must. Um, I, I have rasses. I love rasses. And... If you if you know rasses, they will jump out of your tank. But I'll y'all yeah, just say this and I'll move on. But all fish can jump out of tanks. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've I've been on Facebook and I see someone my fish jumped. You know, it's fish jerky, blah blah blah. And of course, it's terrible. But you know, it's our responsibility to take care of these animals and to keep them in their uh, in their tank. And, and think about it. These fish don't live in two foot of water in most cases. You know, they don't know where the top is. Um, they're going to jump out eventually. I can promise you if you have a wrasse, a fairy wrasse especially, they're going to jump out. And that's really your fault. I would, I would much rather have a rimless tank. Super clean looking. You know, just looks better. But... You know, I would much rather have the fish that I bought, had quarantined, you know, and keep them in my tank than the look of, uh, you know, the clean look of having no top. So I guess it's a trade-off, but, you know, it, it's an inevitability that you're going to have your fish jump out. Um, anyway, that's all I need to say on that. All right, so moving on to some other equipment. This is my control board. I got this board uh, on sale through Bulk Reef Supply. I usually have one built. My buddy Scott builds a lot of things for me. He is awesome at building things. Uh, does a lot of acrylic work. He built that little frag rack. There's another one down. We'll get to that. Anyway, he builds a lot of things for me. Awesome guy. So, four MP40s. I have the Varios pumps for our return. Uh, I use the the 8, the Varios 8. So I'll just touch on that real quick. The Varios lineup pumps, to me, are the only way to go. And I'll, I'll tell you why. The reviews alone uh, should be enough on Bulk Reef Supply to stop you from buying any other pump. So there's that. The cost of the pump is, is awesome. So if you, if you were to take you know, most people say Abyss is the best pump. You know, there's there's other ones, but Abyss is the best pump. Ten-year warranty. Well, I can buy five, I don't know, let's call it five, whatever. Five Barrios 8s for what I would spend on one A200 Abyss pump. You know, you say, oh, there's a ten-year warranty. Well, you know, it's like this is a, a nothing warranty, but the chances, the chances are that the pump will last two, three, four, five years. I'm I'm never gonna justify the cost of an abyss pump. I don't get it unless you have a bunch of head pressure and you're just crazy rich. I would rather spend my money on corals and fish. Um, unless you're just crazy rich, and that, and that, I don't know. I can't justify that one. It's just silly. Honestly, this whole hobby is hard to justify, but that that's a big one for me. So, anyway, S, uh, that's the Varios uh, 8. Then I have the Varios uh, 2 on both the UV and the calcium reactor. I run an Apex, the full Apex. Um, that one is another touchy subject, to me at least, for people that have a reef tank. You know, with an Apex, a, a controller for your, for your reef, to me is just a no-brainer. You should have some form of control on your reef tank, at least at this stage. I mean, there's the new, uh, what is it? Hydros, it's like $200. I mean, you you can't say it's the money anymore. 
I mean, people drop $200 on frags like nothing. But, you know, this controller can save your tank. It saved my tank, I don't know how many times. I guess that's something we could talk about. But, you know, it saved my tank. Uh, heartbeat. You know, I've lost power a couple times. They let me know. Like I was able to get home and, and get a generator hooked up. You know, uh, calc loss or overdose once. That's uh, that's another one. So I guess I just don't get not having one. If you're going to put the money in this, why would you not have one? So um, Apex is a must. I don't, excuse me, controller is a must. If you're going to be serious about reefing, things break. They will break. Um, it's important to me to have some redundancy and some safeguards in place. Um, anyway, that like I said, that's a. Some people be like, you don't need it. Um, you know, I'll move on. I'm gonna ramble a little bit, I guess. <laughs> anyway, okay. So the FMM uh, that is running my ATK. Uh, on the left side, I have another FMM on the right. It's uh, got some leak sensors hooked up to it. I plan on hooking up some optical sensors eventually, possibly doing some more automation. Uh, underneath the dose, I didn't have that hooked up actually until today. Uh, been very productive today, I'm doing videos now. Uh, so on the right side, I'll be dosing Opox, and the left side is ESV magnesium. I don't really dose but 0.1 milliliter of the nopox because uh are not going to be dosing but just one milliliter or 0.1 because i don't have any fish in here and crash the nitrates and then the uh the magnesium i just I supplement so i run a calcium reactor uh you can see right here that's my tank my two eb832s and i have some just standard you know outlets there's another one in this box here so all this runs outside into a box um, I like to keep everything outside because it really it really just uh, saves space you know our, our spouses generally hate this hobby I know mine does and so I like to have everything um, out of the way out of sight out of mind so the calcium reactors outside it's in a box uh, it's covered no sunlight can get to it and uh, anyway, feeds back in. So behind this window, there's actually a 55 gallon drum of uh, RO water. I use that to pump into the tank um, for auto top off and to feed my calc wasser reactor. Um, another another uh, reservoir I have out there is a 220 gallon RO reservoir I actually feed everything else with uh, to top off. And then I have a mixing station with two 55 gallon uh, mixing barrels. I don't do a whole lot of water changes. Um, not really big on water changes. I'm actually gonna probably go to the, the Reef Moonshine, Moonshiners method here soon. Try that out. I'm always seeing great things out of that. And uh, I'd actually would probably be on it already, except for I had to replace all my fish, which cost a fortune. All right, so Trident, that is another, I think, overlooked or underappreciated item in the hobby now is really alkalinity monitoring. Of course, it does calcium and magnesium, but to me, the Trident and any of these monitors that monitor that, you know, we, we say, hey, uh, monitor your, your, test your reef once a week, you know, me lives channels water test Saturdays if you follow him yeah that's great at a bare minimum but you know your alkalinity can really take a plummet in a week depending on how loaded up your tank is or it can overshoot depending on you know what's going on so I subscribe to testing um, a lot I do manual mode on this trident and I test frequently uh, more than I probably should or need to but I just I like to I like to tinker and see where my numbers are all right so moving on from the trident this is my box for my Kia my little shelf 
uh, storage cabinet, I guess is really what it would be. Um, this guy was like $30, I don't know, 35 bucks. I love it. Very inexpensive, but has a lot of room in it. I can keep all my crap in here and out of my regular cabinet, um, out of sight of the wife. But in here, a few things. Uh, I've drilled a couple holes in the back and run my wires through there so that this door can shut. Anyway, that's really all you need to say about that. I do have behind here on the other side, on the back side, Velcro Road, is an Inkberg controller, a WXM, and a PM1 module for the calcium reactor. Not, uh, not as clean as I'd like it to be, but these wire messes, I swear to God. Um, the Inkbird, I'll say this real quick. I don't use my Apex to flip on and off on the heater. I don't like using outlets like that, but uh, what I'll do is I have the Inkbird set up as the primary, and then as a backup, I have the Apex back in the Inkbird up. So it's a little bit more redundancy because as you may know, the heaters are the ones that will generally get you in this hobby. And I'm running BRS heaters. All right, so down in the cabinet. I have a D light on. Down here, I have the calcium reactor uh, come over. STP is the Wi Fi version, but you cannot, or I cannot get the Wi Fi to work. So I've since given up. I've got the UV. I plumbed this um, ahead of time when I was first setting this up. Excuse me. I drilled the holes to plumb this ahead of time. and did not plumb it till uh, a few weeks ago. But the way I did it was I drilled a couple holes and put some bulkheads in there. I ran the S2 down into the sump, up, around, across, comes over, got a union comes down and down here I've got a block valve to block out the the UV when I need to replace a bulb. Comes back up, comes back down and around. So what I actually did here was I actually ran the output of the UV directly into the intake of the pump and then that way I'm not just recirculating the same water over and over again. That ended up working out pretty well. I was proud of that plumbing. I hate plumbing but Part of the hobby okay so to finish up in here i have the a vast marine calc stir uh, it's the ku2 i believe it's a smaller version um, i love that one because it is continuous uh, uh stirring no timer needed it's just simple and that's what i like uh, down here got the it's hooked up and i got just extra tubing i had not rings i'm gonna do a recirculating um, uh, system here soon but that's the co2 scrubber in a dosing container for whenever i finally figure out what i'm gonna put in that battery backup another excellent bare minimum that you should have uh, to get you by until you can get here to put your generator on or do something about an electrical issue that you have all right so that's enough to say about that I've said about that. So my calc washer comes in right here. Got my ATK. I run cups, not socks. I hate socks with filter floss. I had these custom made, 3D printed. Those come from with the Red Sea. Look at that, another urchin. Go figure. One of the first upgrades I did to this thing before I even put water in this tank was change to a Spears gate valve. To me, Red Sea, Besides their stands being pretty much, let's be honest, garbage, that is the worst thing that they designed in their tanks. I just can't figure it out. The diaphragm valve that comes with it is just a mess. If you are going to get a Red Sea, replace this valve before you set it up. It's very easy. There's um, uh, an article on how to do it on Reef to Reef. If you need help finding it, let me know. But that's it. Very easy to replace. Okay, down here I run a little frag system. Um, it is 
kind of taken over with algae right now because I don't have any fish. Normally I'll drop a tang down here and let it go to work and then put him back in the tank. Um, but I don't have that option right now. Um, so I run a few frags down here, nothing special. That guy there was actually fell in the sand and I found it and it's coming back. All right, there's that. I'll get a few more shots of some other frags. Okay, my probes. I run a Kessel down here for right now. I normally have an AI Prime, but this mount came off and the, the light fell in the water which was super unfortunate, but actually I sent it in to AI and they replaced it for free, which was shocking because I knew I was going to have to pay some form, you know, of cost to, to have it replaced. It wasn't their fault, you know, but I thought that was jam up, super cool, and uh, shout out to them for doing that. That was not their responsibility and they still did it, so anyway, awesome deal. So a 16 HD will be on there shortly. So I run the Red Sea Skimmer. This is the 600. Uh, before I had a 900. Uh, actually, so before this I had the Quantum Nios 220. And before that I had the 900 Skimmer and the Red Sea 750. So when I upgraded from the, the 900 uh, Red Sea Skimmer to the, the 220, I instantly regretted it. I loved the skimmer and how quiet it was. It was sleek. It looked great. It worked awesome. But it just lacked the features that this Red Sea has, which for the price really doesn't make sense in my opinion, but, you know, it is what it is. So I went back with the Red Sea 600 in this one. Um, so a couple of reasons why I love this skimmer. Uh, number one, it's got a three-foot hose. That is awesome. I can drain this thing quickly without the wife um, smelling that for too long and freaking out. Generally I'll do it when she's not here. So the cup it has a neck cleaner in it. You probably know this. If you don't, this is the pretty much the main reason I love this thing is the ability to clean the neck. So if you don't if you haven't looked at this skimmer, I would highly suggest it. It's not perfectly quiet, but you can't hear it uh, when the doors are shut. Um, it's not as quiet as the Nios, um, but like I said, the features, and then for the money, I mean, it's less than half the cost of a 220. Um, it works awesome out the box. There's no break-in period. I can't say enough good things about this skimmer. Okay, so that's pretty much it under the sump. I don't think I'm leaving anything out. I use a little Tunzi pump to put some flow in here. Plenty. Um, I think that's really it. I have a skimmer stand in here that Scott made for me. He made this rack that I have covered in algae. Guy can make a lot of awesome things. Nothing else done. I've got the LEDs from Amazon. I love these things because they are cheap. They're super bright. And they just work. They're dimmable too. So that's all there is to say about the sump. I run this light on a counter um, schedule for my main. I um, just have the T5s on right now so it's not so blued out. So that's my tank. Well, GSP, I'm gonna be taking up the wall here. Just wanted to share my experiences from here on out and kind of give some, uh, some things I've learned along the way. Try to share my experience with all of y'all. Love, love. I love a lot of things, huh? These are, get this guy in focus. Yeah, it looks like I'm not gonna get him in focus. These snails, if you can get them, are some of the best snails. Man, I wish I could get one. 
if I can get him over here, are some of the best snails you can get. They're called stomatella snails, and uh, they breed like crazy. They're workhorses, and they're very um, self self reliant. Maybe is the word. They don't fall on their backs like these idiot turbos. Um, they just do their thing, and uh, I love having them. I got one in a frag uh, one time, and from, from that point forward, I've just had a ton of them. Actinia, nice and happy. Matt B, Rainbow Envy, doing well. Walt Disney, struggling a little bit. SCLP. There is the home record. Anyway, that is my tank. Excited to share it with y'all. I'm not going to be a big editor on my videos. I'm not going to throw a bunch of cool music and memes and all that cool stuff that some of these people do. I think it's going to take too much time and make me not want to do videos. Maybe one day. Alright, so I'll do some more videos later. I just wanted to kind of touch, touch base on where I stand now to track that. And then going forward, just share my experience on adding the fish. There's going to be several, way more fish than probably what I should put in here, but I don't care. Um, I load my fish tank up the way I want, manage the water quality. That's all that matters. So tank police, y'all get ready. This guy's going to be loaded out. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all watching. If you would, uh, subscribe, like this video. And the comment if you would like to as well. I'll try to get to those as soon as I can. And I appreciate y'all watching.